Welcome, this is Learners Academy page and I am Mona Bhatia. Uh, today I am going to explain you a poem, a very beautiful poem. There is Another Sky by Emily Dickinson. Uh, this title itself is a metaphor, means there is another place for us or somebody. Uh, in this poem, Emily tries to convince Austin, who is her younger brother, that there is another option available always. One can always go back to their loved one in case they are not happy with their current situation. Uh, the poet is trying to tell her brother that he can come back and live without worry. There is a home waiting for him. This uh, poem is a sonnet and it comprises of two stanzas. Uh, one first stanza is of eight line and is called octave and the second stanza is of six line and is called sestate. Uh, the tone of the poem is very very encouraging and now I am going to give you line by line explanation of the poem. There is another sky ever serene and fair and there is another sunshine though it be darkness there. So in these line, in these four lines, the poetess is trying to tell her brother that there is another sky. That means there is another place. She is telling her brother who is not staying with her. And she is telling him that there is a place which is more serene and more peaceful and more just and fair. So that the brother can come and start living in that place. Maybe Emily's brother is not happy wherever he is currently. And he is facing a lot of injustice. The sister is telling him to come back to that place which is peaceful, which is fair, which is just. Um, there is an elaborate metaphysical conceit here. Uh, and while telling this, Emily is able to create another place which is where everything is fair and is not subjected to injustice and sadness and unfairness all right uh, she tells uh, her brother that there is another sunshine means there is hope there is more happiness here and though her brother is living in darkness in a place where people are very uh, unjust unkind and he's feeling sad or depressed all right so in the fifth line never mind faded forest austin never mind silent fields here is a little forest whose leaf is evergreen so she addresses her brother the name of the brother is austin she tells him austin don't mind the faded forest maybe the place where austin is currently living um, that place is uh, compared to the faded forest means not a proper place to live never mind the silent field she's telling him not to mind the silent fields over there the place where he's living silent field may be compared to the cold nature of the people the unkind behavior of the people or where he's not feeling the warmth all right so she's telling him that here is a little forest whose leaf is evergreen so she's telling him to come back to the little forest that she has where the leaf is evergreen that means the leaf is not going to fade all right austin will be very happy over there he'll feel ever happy all right this was the first octave now we'll go to the second stanza of the poem which is a cestate here is a brighter garden where not a frost has been in its unfading flowers, I hear the bright bee hum. Preeti, my brother, into my garden, come. Alright, now she continues describing her garden and she says that it is a brighter place. It's a brighter world compared to the one that everyone lives actually physically or where her brother is currently living in. Alright. Uh, this place uh, never had frost and there will never be a frost all right so this place where there is a love of everyone around so there is never going to be a sad time there is an allusion to death change and anything negative here uh, the flowers are unfading they live forever without losing their beauty and also there are bright bees here so the final couplet shows the warm and bright images where she asks her brother to come 
and join her garden when he won't have to cons you know be concerned with the dangers uh, of the real world of aging or of change all right so that was all about the poem there is another sky in this line there is a metaphor and there is a ambiguity a uh, metaphor because there is a indirect comparison between another sky which and an ideal place which is very serene and fair so there is a indirect comparison ambiguity because the line does not clearly tells us what does the poet mean by another sky it's not clear all right now in the next line and there is another shine sunshine though it be darkness there so in this line you can see there is a repetition of the sound th three times so there is an alliteration here plus there is ambiguity again because we are not sure about what another sunshine the poet is talking about so it's not clear plus there is an antithesis why because the opposite ideas of sunshine and darkness are stated together in these two line and there is a metaphor also because uh, there is a indirect comparison between the sunshine and joy all right so uh, in these two line there is alliteration there is ambiguity there is antithesis and metaphor so in the next two line never mind the faded forest austin never mind silent fields so here you can see there is a repetition of letter f three times so what is it which figure of speech is here alliteration all right and then you can see there is a repetition of word never there is a repetition of word mind so there is a figure of speech called repetition plus there are two more figures of speech here the one is personification and there is a metaphor personification because the fields have been given the animate quality of being silent so the fields are silent like human beings or all right and personification because all right personification is done because the faded forest and dull and gloomy experience they are indirectly implicitly compared all right so the faded forest and the dull and gloomy experience are experiences are indirectly compared so there is a metaphor here so now we go to the next line here is a little forest and here is a so in these two line uh, there is a hyperbole because the leaf is evergreen so which is not possible there is an exaggeration little forest whose leaf is evergreen which is an exaggeration of happiness is not everlasting all right the poet is trying to convince her brother by telling that who's uh, come to this place because here the leaf is evergreen but which is not possible she is only trying to convince him with an exaggeration or with an hyperbole so the figure of speech is hyperbole but there is also a metaphor here because the little forest full of green leaves and is an and an ideal place that is free of any problem and suffering there is a indirect comparison between these two places little forest of green leaves and an ideal place which is free from any problem and suffering now we go to the next line next two line here is a brighter garden where not a frost has been now there is a metaphor here why because brighter garden and a place that uh, is just like a paradise so there is a indirect comparison between the this place where she is living and and a place which is brighter garden she is comparing her place with a brighter garden and there is a indirect comparison now where not a frost has been so this is also a hyperbole because whichever place you are you cannot be you know free from sadness or unhappiness so the poet is trying poetess is trying to convince her brother that uh, this place does not has has a frost that means no sad or gloomy moment but which is not case which is not possible all right 
so the exaggeration that darkness and pay, play, uh, pain has no place in her uh, brighter place is an exaggeration plus there is an inversion also why inversion because the correct prose order has not been followed in these line the proper prose order should have been here is a brighter garden where there has not been a frost this should have been the correct prose order now next line in its unfading flower i hear the bright bee hum so there is a alliteration why because of the repetition of letter b the sound of letter b is repeated here and there is an hyperbole also because unfading flower shows exaggeration of everlasting joy the joy can be there in that place but it can never be everlasting because life is a life is a circle of joy and happiness plus it is a cycle sometimes joy is there sometimes sadness is there so you cannot have happiness all the time even if it is a place where poet is trying poetess is trying to you know convince her brother to come in but she is trying to exaggerate the happiness in that place there is an onomatopoeia here because the word hum is seen in this line the word hum denotes the sound produced by the b okay and the next line prithi my brother into my garden come so uh, there is a metaphor here there is a indirect comparison between the garden and the place that offer peace and tranquility and contentment so the garden is indirectly compared to that place where there is lot of peace tranquility and contentment all right and plus there is one more figure of speech which is inversion should the proper prose order should have been preeti my brother come into my garden all right so that was all about the figures of speech i hope you enjoyed watching this video and understood the deeper meaning of the poem as well in my next video i'm going to cover the critical appreciation of this poem and don't miss it uh, if you want to watch more such videos like this uh, you can subscribe to my channel the learners academy is dedicated to serve all the students of maharashtra board of 9th 10th 11th and 12th grade that's all for today stay safe and have fun and as always thank you for watching have a wonderful day